we probably get 10 times more fan mail about our score for Medieval than anything else. So, pun firmly intended, it will be on our gravestone. Medieval's been the linchpin of everything that we've done, really. I mean, one of the first things that we ever did together and um, something that's followed us throughout the entireties of our, of our careers. Bob and Barn is the amusing moniker for a couple of Cambridge-based composers, Paul Arnold and myself, Andrew Barnabas. We've been working together since 1996, and we first met at a games company uh, here in Cambridge called Millennium Interactive. Uh, that company got bought by Sony uh, in 1998, and we worked our way up. And uh, yes, we worked together writing scores and uh, left Sony in 2001 and started Bob and Barn. I was technically the in-house composer and uh, Bob was uh, employed as the second sound person, but not to do music at that point in time. Uh, it was originally doing other stuff, sound design, voice recording and other such interesting jo some sound jobs, but not music. But he, he, he always wanted to do music. We knew that. We knew and, that. And I was also trained yeah, yeah, in that. Yeah, yeah. But I, you know, I just didn't want to let him. You know, as far as I said, that was my world. Why would I want to get him involved in that? And so instead he waited until I went away for a week on holiday came in and uh, wrote a track for a game which we were scoring at that point called Medieval. I didn't know whether they'd use it or not, didn't know whether Barn had, you know, uh, spit feathers about it or not. I, did, I really didn't know, I just, I just wanted to have a go because it was a really interesting brief. The game uh, aesthetically took its uh, visual tones and, and um, comedic style and everything else a lot from Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas which is unlike anything he'd ever done before. So it was also the, the somewhat daunting task of trying to recreate the sound of a film score with a synth and a sampler. I kind of just sat down and I wrote uh, a waltz, I seem to remember, and it was very structurally very, very simple. Came back and played it to me, I was initially like, You've written a tune, how dare you? It's my area. But actually, the tune he wrote was really good. It totally fitted the game. In fact, it's actually a, game, a track which is featured on all four medieval games now. And that's why I realised, actually, this could be a really good thing. So we started collaborating from then on. Between the two of us, we're never going to write something that one of us individually would write. And, it's a, it's a, that's, and for me, that's a strength. Largely because of our difference of either personality, taste of music, or our difference of approach. Well, as people, we're, we're quite different people. He's a, he's a little bit more reserved, a bit quieter than me. I'm a little bit more on your face. I'm a little bit louder. In terms of our approaches, uh, that I mean, our backgrounds and our interests in music definitely play a big part here. I like my jazz, I like my funk, I like my disco. And uh, Bob likes his rock music. So we have quite different tastes there. And in terms of our, the instruments we played, we both played the piano, but then he played guitar and trumpet, whilst I played oboe and the drums. So we covered various different, different areas of an orchestra. Well, up until doing these round of interviews, I hadn't even considered the fact that Medieval was what started us working together as a partnership. But what a great start, because it was the first time I've been asked to write music in an orchestral style. All of my scores for the previous six, seven years for that were more traditional game kind of gaming styles. And so that in itself was a huge creative challenge. The fact that uh, I was fortunately musically educated, and as was Bob, it meant that they were, we were a little bit more, it's found it slightly easier to uh, allow us to, to try to analyse scores and what make, we'll makes them tick. We realised it was a genre we loved doing, and so when the opportunity to do something like this came up, we jumped at it. Medieval 2 happened in, uh, in 2000. I, I again was trying to push for a live recording of this. Back in those days, live orchestral recording of games really wasn't the damn thing. But We'd, all, we'd learnt so much from what we'd worked on Medieval that the technology and the techniques we applied meant that Medieval 2 sounded much more realistic. 
And so by the time Medieval Resurrection when it came around, for us it was 2004, um, we'd already had the opportunity to work and record a live orchestra with the same group, uh, same team at Sony, two years prior for that, uh, for a game called Primal. So fortunately, from this perspective, this was a much easier sell. Uh, they even said to us, you know, we'll give you a contract with a live orchestra and that would be quite enticing. It was indeed true. The opportunity to re uh, to realise the medieval scores from 1998 with a live orchestra was going to be amazing. And it was an incredible experience. The whole purpose of the live recording is, um, is that it's an interaction with human beings. And that's what you don't get with a computer. And that was the last medieval we thought was going to happen. It came out in 2005, so 15 years ago. When Medieval 2019, the PS4 remake came around, this was a this was a creative, uh, creative wet dream really from that perspective. So to do it, to do the Medieval score, how we how we'd always wanted to do it, was just just an incredible opportunity to come back to. This was a remake of the original game. It was clear that we needed to um, to be faithful to to the format of the original game. So what we ended up with was, you know, there was some freedom to orchestrate things slightly differently, to add melodies where melodies hadn't existed before, but essentially to keep it the same. And, and ac actually the, the biggest change was the, that we were going to make the score interactive rather than linear as it was before. It was written in a way, because, we, because the game wasn't, being, wasn't completed any right about when we were writing it, we were literally writing music which we thought might fit a certain level but you couldn't get any idea of pace or any idea of, uh, of timing of the game. Once we got into the new medieval, we, just, we, had, the same, we had the same thing. We had to use the same piece of music. But the problem with that scenario is it doesn't reflect what's happening on screen at all. Whether, whether uh, the player is calmly walking through some beautiful, uh, beautiful scenery or getting his ass kicked. The music does not change to reflect that. And I always thought this has always been a problem. This is why we need to do something to make it more, more interactive. During the recording process, we made we recorded an enormous amount of different material to allow the game to choose different bits of this music to play during the runtime. But there was still a bit of interesting talk about pacing. Now Bob had this wonderful idea. He said, "Why don't we do a, a spiccato layer?" Well, here we are in Blakeney recording the string overdubs for Medieval. So Steve, please take it away. <laughs> Spiccato is a certain style of uh, playing, but predominantly no, used for the strings, where it's a very short playing, but, but, but very rhythmic playing. So we use this we use technique to uh, add a layer of effectively rhythmic strings underneath all of the medieval tracks to make them sound like they're much quicker. It also meant that we could add something new to every track. They all had this extra layer on them, so it, it just... It, it made it, it satisfied us from a creative standpoint because it meant that you know we were doing something new everywhere. We we love working in games, and even though we've had a bit of a hiatus um, from games over the last few years, we focus more on TV and film. Uh, working on this medieval remaster has has reminded us just how wonderful it is to work in video games. Well, medieval has probably been one of the most important projects to us over the years. It's a franchise we both cherish. It's a musical style we understand as well as anything we've ever worked on. And um, it's always a great privilege to uh, get to revisit that world and, and work in that world again.